Okay, in today's video, we are going to calculate the power output of a car that is accelerating, and we're going to do this problem three different ways. So you can see there's three different ways you can look at power, work, energy, velocity, and acceleration. We have a 1,200 kilogram race car that accelerates from rest, so its initial velocity is zero, to 160 kilometers per hour over a time of 7.5 seconds. And we want to know what is the average power output of the engine to do that. So we're going to assume there's uniform acceleration in this case. But power, as we know, is work divided by time. And that is the force times the distance divided by the time. Now you can see I purposely put over here the T under the D because you can see that that can be simplified into the force and the distance divided by the time is the velocity. Now we're given actually the velocity or the final velocity. And in this case, we have to convert this velocity into meters per second. So I'm not gonna show you how to do that. That's relatively straightforward. But I'm just gonna tell you over here that 160 kilometers per hour is equal to about 100 miles per hour, which is equal to about 44.7 meters per second. All right, now we know the velocity. Okay, we're given the velocity over here, so we, we can calculate the average velocity just by dividing the final velocity over two, but we need to calculate the force first. And you remember from Newton's second law that the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. We're given the mass. We're given the change in velocity and time, so we can also calculate the acceleration. So we can calculate the force needed to accelerate this car from rest to that speed over that time. And that's the mass, which is 1,200 kilograms. We're given that. The acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. The car starts from rest, initial velocity, final velocity, time. So the acceleration is simply 44.7 meters per second divided by 7.5 seconds. And therefore, we can see that the force needed to do that is 7,152 newtons. Now we know the force. We can figure out the average velocity just by taking this velocity and dividing it by two. And now we can solve for the power because the force is 7,152 newtons times the average velocity, which is 22.4. Again, that's approximately half of this. And you get that the power output is 1.6 times 10 to the five watts. Now, oftentimes, especially for an internal combustion engine, we want to know what is the horsepower of that engine. We can convert because we know that one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. So 1.6 times 10 to the fifth divided by 746 means that the average power output of that car is 214 horsepower. Okay, that is way number one that we solved that problem using the force and the velocity. Now for this example, we're going to use the power output equation again. Power is equal to the work divided by the time, but work is also equal to change in energy. So we're going to use the change in kinetic energy because this car is moving vertically, excuse me, moving vertically, horizontally, not moving vertically. So we're not talking about changes in potential energy, just changes in kinetic energy. So we're going to calculate the change in kinetic energy first, because we don't know that. The initial kinetic energy is obviously zero because the car was at rest. The final kinetic energy is one half mv squared. One half is 0.5. The mass we're given, 1200 kilograms. The final velocity is 44.7 meters per second, we're going to square the velocity and just the velocity. And we get that the change in kinetic energy is 1.2 times 10 to the six joules. And then we simply take the change in energy, that's the amount of work actually that was done on the car to, to get it to go from rest to 160 kilometers per hour in 7.5 seconds, divide that by the time, and we get once again the same answer, 1.6 times 10 to the fifth watts, we can convert that into horsepower, and again, it's 214 horsepower. All right, so now that's way number two, and we determine the power output by using work divided by time, and work 
is equal to, in this case, the change in energy. All right, now for number three, of course, we're going to start the same way. Power is equal to work divided by time. We're going to say that the work is the force times the distance divided by the time, and we have to calculate the force once again. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we're also going to calculate the distance using our kinematic equations. But the force, we're going to do the same way. It's just the mass divided by the acceleration. And we get, once again, the same force we had from uh, the first slide, 7,152 newtons. That's the force. Now we need to know the distance. Okay, We're not given the distance, but we can calculate the distance using our kinematic equation that the distance is 1 half the acceleration times the time squared. Once again, we're going to calculate the acceleration. We have a one half, the acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. And then we're also given the time and we have time squared. And we figure out that the car, when it goes from rest to 160 kilometers per hour at 7.5 seconds, actually travels 168 meters. And now we know the force, we know the distance, and we know the time. And we can calculate the power output of the engine by multiplying, <coughs> excuse me, the force times the distance and divided by the time. Once again, you get 1.6 times 10 to the fifth watts. And once again, if you divide that by 746 watts, you get that that car has an average power output of 214 horsepower. Okay? So there you go. There's more than one way to calculate the power. We calculated the power output three different ways, and we came up with the same answer. So we're pretty certain that we did each of those correctly. All right. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following three things. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And give me a thumbs up for this video. And then subscribe to my YouTube channel. Get all my excellent physics chemistry, and math videos. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.